Hey, what's going on everybody? Today I'm going to be reviewing the board game Umanji. This game came out in 1995 from Milton Bradley and it is for two to four players. Now this game recently got re-released in 2017 uh, by another company, but the game basically plays the same. Anyway, the object of this game is you are trying to uh, get out of the jungle of danger da -da -da -da, in this game. Uh, basically you're playing against the game, um, so there's a little bit of co-op in this game, but ultimately you're trying to be the first one out. And once you are able to do that, everybody will be rescued, but you will win. So. Let's show you you, Bonnie. Um, you've got four pawns, um, and each of them have their own pathway over here. And ultimately what you are trying to do is you are trying to get one of your pawns all the way over here uh, to the end. Um, now, the game will end in one of two ways. Either somebody is going to uh, get over here to the end, or in what is called the Doomsday Grid over here, all of these spaces are going to get filled up by cards, which are over there. Right here you have a movement die, and you're simply going to roll this and move the amount of spaces that you roll. And these are called rescue dice. Uh, what they have are a number of different symbols on here, and uh, these have uh, correspond with what is on the card, which I'll show you here in a little bit. Uh, now, the hourglass is wild. Uh, if you're playing a two-player game, that will not be the case, but in this case, it will be wild. And uh, each player is going to be receiving one of these. So basically, the way it works is you're going to go ahead and roll, and then you're going to go ahead and move. Now, uh, there's a few spaces I'm going to go ahead and talk about how they work. Uh, if you end up rolling and you land on a blank space, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and draw a card, and then you're going to go ahead and put the card in this slot. Now, if you read the card, I hope you can see it okay, uh, you'll see that there is a number three over there, and there is a die symbol, uh, which basically corresponds with this die, which is this. And then there's a little riddle over here, and uh, I'll read it to you. It says, don't stop the game, you realize, or one of you may vaporize. Uh, this basically talks about one of the dangers in the jungle. Uh, so what's going to happen is you've got an eight-second timer over here, and of the players... Uh, are going to have to try to roll uh, this die symbol that, in order to rescue you. Now, if it turns out all of them do roll the die symbol, then all of those players that rolled are going to move this amount of spaces forward, which is three, and they're not going to follow any of the commands that are on the space. Um, if they do not, then what's going to happen is this card is going to be placed here in what is called the Doomsday Grid. And once again, you don't want to fill all these up. Um, so, anyway, the, your turn in that case will end, either you'll have been rescued or not, and then it will go on to the next player. So typically it would work like this. Let's say I spun this around and I'm trying to roll um, the symbol here, and uh, I have not done it. So in this case, um, the card would go ahead and get placed there. Now if you land on the rhino space over here, this is going to allow you to place the rhino in front of any other player to block them. So let's just say we had this guy over here. Um, you want to place the rhino here and block him. Now in order for uh, the rhino to get moved, one of two things can happen. Either the blue player is going to have to roll an even number, or somebody else is going to have to land on the rhino, which in this case, uh, they will go ahead and move the rhino somewhere else. Now, if Blue is unsuccessful in uh, moving the rhino, then he is going to basically follow the directions of whatever space he's on. In this case, he would draw one of the danger cards and place it in there and have try to have the players rescue him. If you land on a space that says wait for five or eight, everybody's going to go ahead and start rolling this die. And what you're hoping for, at least the player who landed on this, is for someone to roll a five or an eight. If they end up rolling a five or an eight, then this player will uh, be able to move again. If uh, someone fails to roll a five or an eight, then that player is going to basically move back one. So in this case, this guy didn't roll a five or an eight, so he moves back. Uh, this guy didn't roll a five or an eight, so he moves back, etc. So once somebody rolls a five and an eight, or an eight, they will be able to continue forward. Now, if there's a rhino in front of them, uh, the rhino is gonna basically move back along with them. So he'll still be blocked by the rhino. Now we go to the jungle space over here. Um, if somebody lands in this, then basically everybody is going to be lost. You're gonna draw one of these cards over here and stick it into uh, the decoder. And I'll just tell you what it says. Uh, there's a number three, and then there is an open door symbol, uh, which represents this. So in this case, everybody is going to have eight seconds to try to roll the open door symbol. So everyone's gonna roll and try to get the open door symbol. If they are successful in doing so, um, 
then all players are going to be safe and they'll be able to continue on. If they fail, then once again, this card is going to be placed on the Doomsday Grid like this, and then uh, the process is going to go ahead and repeat until um, everybody is able to get rescued out of the jungle, and then, then they will be able to continue on. Uh, so basically, that's how movement and the game works. Um, you're just going to keep on playing this game uh, until somebody either reaches the end here, in which case they'll call you Monzi and win the game, and you'll have to land on this by exact count, but you can do that either by a die roll or by uh, moving uh, the number that is on the card if you manage to do a rescue. Or the game is going to end uh, once all of these spaces are filled with a danger card. In this case, everybody loses. So ladies and gentlemen, that is how you play Yumanji. So my final thoughts on Yumanji. Okay, well, there's a little interesting story with how I came about this game. We have a thrift store uh, that oftentimes has bin sales and what they'll do is they'll let you in the back room and you can peruse through all these bins. they got tons of stuff in there. And anyway, I saw this game in a shopping cart and it was just kind of sitting there with a bunch of other stuff. But there were a lot of other shopping carts like uh, right in front of the bins that were sitting there as well. I thought those carts were there to hold more things, but to this day I'm not really sure, so I ended up getting it, and I paid I think 50 cents for this game. It was only missing the timer, and I was able to get that for cheap, so to this day I don't know if I actually stole it or not, but if I did, oh well, what are you going to do? Sorry. Anyway, what do I think about this game? Okay, well, this game is okay. Um, this game is heavily dependent on dice. I mean, everything that you do is going to be determined by a die roll. If you're going to move, you're going to roll the die. If you want to try to get rescued, you and your friends are going to roll the die. If you get stuck in the jungle, you're going to roll the die. I mean, everything is by die roll in this game. Uh, there's no strategy. There's no decision making at all. It's just simply rolling the die. Now, I like the theme okay. Um, you know, the board is nice. It's a three-way board, so it folds out. It's rather long. Uh, so I like the theme pretty good. Um, doesn't have like any characters. It just has regular wooden pawns, but the pawns are nice. Um, and the cards are cool. I like the little... Um, the little code maker that uh, comes with the co the cards. Um, and this was based off of the movie, obviously, and I think they did a pretty good job of translating uh, the movie from the game. Um, but the game does suffer a little bit just because there isn't anything else but rolling the dice. Um, now, if you're going to get some friends together and you want to play a game that's easy, you don't have to think too much and stress-free, that has a little bit of, I guess you could say, excitement when it comes to trying to get out of the jungle uh, before all those... Uh, cards in the doomsday space fill up um you know that can be a little bit exciting i think times i have played it we've been able to get out every time but you can make the game more difficult just by placing a few cards into uh the doomsday grid that way uh you know that way you'll have fewer slots open and a harder chance to get out uh so would i recommend this game tough call uh just really depends on whether you're okay with games that are heavily based on luck and dice um this game typically goes for about 25 dollars plus shipping on ebay and to me that's just way too much i would recommend getting the game that's newer um the board is smaller but the game i believe plays the exact same and you can get it for i think 20 dollars if you wanted to go ahead and purchase it um but I think this game is probably more geared for kids than adults. Uh, I enjoy the game okay. It's not one of my favorites. I'd kind of, you know, rank it around the middle, I think. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's got a nice theme. The pieces, you know, the cards are nice. Um, so it really just kind of depends on whether you're okay with... Uh, a game that is heavily dependent on dice and luck. So folks, that's my review of Yumanji, the game. I'll see you later. Keep on gaming.